Hola. Yo lo veo a él, pero él no me ve a mí. What? ¿No te veo? ¿Me ves? No. No me ve. Yo no sé cómo es cámara. Mira, la tiene ahí. Hi, good afternoon. Estoy al revés. Está patas arriba. Salgo patas arriba. Hola. Hola. Salgo patas arriba. Estás al revés. No importa que salgas, tú estás ayudando, mami. Lo tienes que poner. Mira cómo salgo patas arriba. Estás al revés, Rubén. Sí, pero pues, no sé cómo hacerlo. Espérate. Hi, Alejandra. ¿Cómo estás? Hi, Ernesto. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. How is Maxi? Better, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. ¿Y no tiene más volumen? Mira, a ver qué es. Mute y audio. Yo siempre soy el pendejo que estoy de último. Club virtual. No, ahí la vas a cerrar. Pin. <laughs> ¿Estás teniendo problemas, Rubén? Siempre, sí. Es que yo soy, pero como poco hábil para esto. Mm -hmm. Mi señora me está ayudando, me está ayudando. Allí dice empezar el video. Ahí. Pero ¿por qué si la cámara estaba abierta y mira a ver qué es que la cámara y por qué está no? Está idea. Mira la Sigo vida. saliendo al revés. ¿Cómo lo cambio? Ay, Juan David. Yo la verdad no sé. Ahí sí no sé. No, espérese. Voltea, voltea el... Me va a tocar hacerlo del teléfono. Espérate que esto está muy raro. Hi, the pin shows. Oh, Alba. Oh, qué raro. Qué locura esto. Juan David, how are you? Good afternoon. Hello, Mr. Ernesto. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Juan David, shows. Video settings. Hi, Juan David. Audio, chair, recording, statics, accessibility. Ya, ya lo arreglé. Dame un segundito. Ok, Mr. Rubén, how are you? Is it better? Hello, everybody. How is everybody? Fine, thank you. you did you, Hi, do you hear me well? I hear so, so low. No, I can't hear you well. We can hear you fine. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Now I don't see anything. I, I lost everything again. You lost what? You see me? Yes, I can okay. see. Yes. Hey, mami, ¿cómo le subo el volumen yo a este aparato? Para yo poder oír mejor. <laughs> Turn on the volume. ¿Dónde tiene el volumen? Porque yo no oigo. No, tiene que no. volverse a meter en el, en el este, en el programa de, de comienzo del este, en audio, en volumen. Allá, ¿dónde está el audio volumen? Por favor, pónmelo. Yo no lo no sé poner. Yo no lo sé poner. Okay, if you, if you listen what I say, it's better. I, I see, I hear so bad. I can listen to you. Don't worry. No veo donde dice volumen. We're just waiting for more students. We can wait some more minutes, probably. Aquí, aquí. Yes. Mira aquí el micrófono para subirlo. Do we have here also Leo? Leo is participating? I think that Leo is invited. Yes. Please. Audio settings, déjame aquí. Yeah, I'm here as well, watching. Oh, this está el volumen. Hey, I'm here for a while. You? I'm good and good, and you? Hi, thank you. Yeah, Long time no see. It's a pleasure. Yeah, the same to you. Okay. I don't see. Uh, now, ahora se me puso pequeño. Ya no veo nada, mira. <laughs> okay. So. Hey, thank you. So we are only three, four today. Juan David is out again? No, more are coming, but you know, some, uh, they are not, not here yet, but there are some here. Okay, Rubén. Hello. Before starting. Hello, Alejandra. Nice to see you again. Hi, Rubén. 
Yeah, nice to see you. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Fine. Uh, with a lot of change since our last time. <laughs> yes, of course. Everything is changing so quickly now. Mm -hmm. No, but she has news. Tell her. Tell her, Alejandra. Tell her about the good news. Ah, uh, okay. No, Ruben, I I get a job, a new job, and now I am working since uh, Washington DC. I am working for the IDB. Yeah, I. Fantastic! I, Congratulations. Yeah. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. It's like a crazy adventure, but it's nice. Everything is going well. So Fantastic. Now since here, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel so good for you. Thank you. Just to take care of the opportunity. Now is Juan David. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. And you? Yeah, very well. Nice. Nice to see you again. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Juan David is one of the new students. So why don't you give a little, very short presentation of yourself to Ruben, please? Okay. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Ruben. Uh, my name is Juan David Torres. I am 16 years old. I am on 11th grade, uh, my last um, year of high school. I'm preparing myself with Mr. Ernesto to uh, have, um, you know, to improve my English skills in order to apply to, into a university in the United States in Louisiana. In Hammond, it's called uh, Louisiana Southeastern University. And well, that's me. <laughs> hey, fantastic. You're so young and speak so well English. Okay, Margarita, you are new too, so please, the short presentation to Rwanda you. Hi, every, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you, Ruben. Uh, I'm Margarita. Same. Hello, Margarita. Uh, okay. I'm environmental engineer. Uh, I'm working at uh, Ecopetrol. Uh, and this is my second Hello. forum. <laughs> and I... Uh, <laughs> I am a new student of, the, of Ernesto. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. You work at Ecopetrol in Bo at Bogota? At Bogota? Yes, I live fantastic. in Bogota, yes. I, I have a very good friend and a co uh, client. He's working also in Ecopetrol many years ago. Yes. But he's living in, in, in Bucaramanga, near in Pie de Cuesta. Pie de Cuesta. OK, in Santander. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, a lot of a lot of people in Ecopetrol are or living or are of Santander. Okay. Thank Very you, good. Margarita. Uh, okay, Giovanni, please, a short presentation to Mr. Sanchez. Giovanni, are you there? Well, I guess not. Okay, Carolina, how are you? Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, guys. Hi, Carolina. Ruben, Carolina, not one student. She lives in Mexico. Mommy. She's going Sorry. To... Say again. Carolina, give a short presentation to Ruben. Oh, yes. So, uh, so I'm Carolina Mariño. I'm from Colombia. Uh, sorry, that I'm, I'm right now on the street. <laughs> yeah, very good. That's with, me, with my baby. So. <laughs> It's the ice cream time, so <laughs> I apologize. But anyway, the, uh, from sorry. Nice, nice to meet you. Uh, nice where, to meet which, you as well. <laughs> where, which city are you in now? Which city? Where? I I live in Mexico right now. Ah, fantastic. Yeah, Beautiful. yeah. So happy, happy to be here and listen to your your experience and all those countries that you it have been living. It will be fine. <laughs> it will be a pleasure to to, yeah. to spend time with you. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Carolina. Okay, uh, Anna, how are you? Hi, Ruben. Happy to Hello. see you again. Yes, the same. You, uh, I still think that Ernesto and you look exactly the same. We are you very, very we are, we are soul, soul brothers. So yeah, good. like twins. <laughs> so, as you know, I work for Credit Core Capital. I live in Bogota. I have two kids. And I like to travel a lot, and I love Sweden. Okay. Fantastic. Yes, I know some part of your history now. Thank you. Okay, Ijala, are you here? She's hey, hi. 
So uh, my apologies for joining late. Don't worry. You're very welcome. Thank you. Through in a short presentation, please. Uh, okay, I am Ivia Lapava. Uh, I have one daughter. I love traveling also. Uh, uh, and I'm so pleased to hear you about all your travel experience. Thank you very much. Okay, Laura, Leo, they are here too. They are, a, as you know, Laura is Ruben's daughter and Leo is Ruben's a, son. Older, older. Older son, son. okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome here. Laura, you want to say something? Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to be in here. Hello, Laura, welcome. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so since we are almost all here, why don't we give the opportunity to Ruben to tell us? Oh, for who? For those of you that don't know Ruben, Ruben is a lawyer, he's a very good friend of mine. You know, he's my soul brother. And he's collaborating with me here, with you guys, with all your students. And he's going to tell us about all, all his experiences around the world. Okay? So I hope you. you like it. So please uh, listen to him. And then we'll have another session for questions. All right? Very well. Okay. Okay, Ruben, the forum is yours. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation, Ernesto. And I would like just to begin to, to say that the, my experience about traveling, it begins because I'm very curious, curiosity. And uh, I always have this uh, feeling to know new things. And uh, it is like, um, like, a, like a gift of God that I have had this opportunity to, to, to go around the world. And that's, that's what I want to begin with. It's, thank you to to the highest uh, Lord that he gave me the opportunity to go around the world. And uh, my first trip, um, it began when I was um, uh, as a student at the same age as the young guy. When, he was when I was 16, 17 years old, he, my father gave us a, a trip to, to Miami the normal one, and then I stayed there during some weeks. And at the end of this trip, uh, I was allowed to go to the the cru cruise sea in the at the boat cruise sea, I think it is called. And it goes around the uh, Bahamas, Newport, and um, Nassau. And then uh, when I was there, I got the opportunity. I it, it was like a like a little animal has beaten me, and then I begin to to get uh, attached to like, a, like some kind of fever to begin to, to travel. Then after, after that short experience, I, I went to the university study. And uh, when I finished my studies, my, uh, my first international trip to Europe, it was uh, to, to Sweden where I had a brother. And here I begin to, to, to learn um, my first wife. I got married and thanks to her, I got the Swedish passport, the Swedish nationality, that it is a very good passport because it allows you to, to go around the world. Yeah, as we know, it is very difficult for Colombians to, to get visum, visum to different countries and the, this allows us just to go around without asking for a visum. So that was, that was very important. Uh, the first trip that I made here, it was to Finland. It was another cruise from Stockholm to Finland. It's very easy to travel. It cost around uh, 20, 30 euros. And um, you get a cabin. It's uh, almost um, 12, 12 hours to cross the, that part in the North Balticum. And um, I, it was nice to, to to bath in the in the Swede, in the Finnish sauna for the first time, because uh, it is uh, as, as you know, uh, probably you don't know, but it is tell it is told that the the Finnish people they are born and they die at the sauna. Probably it is not like this now, but in the in the in the further periods before the electricity and all these things during many centuries, 
it is very cold country. So um, when the woman they were going to 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 get birth to do birth, they got the warm water, the warm place, so that they can use all these facilities. And when the people die, it is a place where the when you don't warm it up, it is frozen all the time, so you can keep the body there till it is time to to you can dig the the ground to to bury the person. So it is that. That's why they say like that, that people are born and die in, in the sauna. Then after that, uh, my, my other trip, it was by car uh, to, to Denmark. It was very good, uh, beautiful, lit, very strange. It is di difficult uh, to understand the difference of the culture. The people were more, they were, they were more, they were warmer than the Swedish people. So in that in that aspect, it was a little more facility, and you find a lot different. The food is also very nice there. Then after that, my, my next trip it was to Mallorca, to Palma de Mallorca. In Sweden, it is very easy to travel uh, around the world, and they have some kind of different uh, offices, tourist of offices that they buy packets in different uh, places around the world. Where they can, where you, uh, as a tourist, can come through them, and at, at a short, at a cheap price that includes both the the trip back and forward in plane, the transport, and the, the transport from the airport to the hotel, and sometimes it includes the the pension and the or the half pension. It means that you have the food or only the breakfast. I usually take, used to take that ones. And, um, and the hotel, and, and it is it is it, it's always no it doesn't cost so much money, so everybody is almost allowed to do that in during the, some period in the during the year, mostly during the the summer time. So Palma de Mallorca was fascinating, uh, good first time that in, that from Sweden I went to one country that I can use my own language, so that was uh, a plus. And uh, the food was uh, very different from what the things we eat here in Sweden. It was most like a Mediterranean food, fish and the good wines. And then they are in, in Palma de Mallorca. Uh, they have uh, some different kind of touristic attractions. And the, the one that I remember the best, it was uh, the, the Drac Caves, Las Cuevas del Drac. So it is like a like an underwater cave that the a lot of water runs under there, and it is very beautiful because they have make an, a very beautiful um, illumination and like stage, very beautiful stage and huge stage, and when suddenly you come, you pay the, the entrance, you go down, you sit in this stage, so just very quiet, very beautiful, and they have the the, the lights, uh, they put the more more lower lights when suddenly you begin to hear far away uh, a philharmonica orchestra and you begin to hear you begin to hear and it gets louder and louder and louder and then you see a huge boat like a, like this um, like a big canoe but huge with a whole symphonic orchestra playing in this cave so you, and then you become like very astonished it's, it's very beautiful and they pass and they go around in this water. That was that was a beautiful experience. Uh, another place, uh, it was that up in the mountains. You can I, the, the, what I have to say is that it is very good. It's a very good um, adv uh, advice that uh, when you go to these places, you can rent a car for a little amount of money too. I usually in the beginning I tried to rent a little the smallest the smallest car because uh, I didn't uh, have so much money to 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 rent a, a, a big car with a better motor, but uh, so I a little Fiat or something like that, and you go around and you go up in uh, Mallorca to one place that it is called uh, Valdemosa. It is like a beautiful cluster, cluster where they where uh, they they have like some times sometimes they have a spiritual retirements now times they have been making like like at a hotel like a touristic attraction but the the thing with this the special thing is that Chopin 
the composer, he was living there with one of his uh, lovers during some time. So it is very special there. And they have concerts with this uh, kind of music. And that was good. Um, then another trip that I remember, it was to, to Turkey, Turkey, Tur Turkey, 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 you say in Swedish. Uh, they, uh, they, one of these um, uh, travels that it is called uh, Charter. Uh, I went to one place that it is uh, known to be the biggest maritime harbor in the whole Europe. I don't know why it's probably it's in the Turkish uh, side of Europe. And it is called Marmaris, Marmaris, Marmaris. Very beautiful place, very touristic, um, a harbor place, good fish. And uh, the amazing with this was that the people, they are very friendly. You are walking by, you are walking by and people invite you to your house. They want to talk to you. They invite you to drink something that it is called Raki. Raki, it is like a, like a, like from the like a aguardiente, like fire water, but from the from um, like like grappa from the grapes. So people very friendly. The first time that I the, that I saw some belly dance, belly dance, belly dance, and the most amazing with this the, that when I tried to to see who was the person who was dancing, it, it was very surprising because it was one man. It was not a woman. He was dressed up like a woman, but it was a man. They say that they have the, the best kind of movie, movement. So they, that was very amazing too. And uh, then I, uh, by the owner of the hotel, I told you the people, they were very friendly. He was going, he went in a trip he was going to supposed to be to meet her, her mother some like 800 kilometers away from the place we were in the coast into the country into the middle of, of turkey so we went very early in the morning with him and we pay some for the for the for the benzina for the gas and he took to us to a very splendid place that it is like a it is called el pamukali Pamukale, it is like a like a white calc from calc from calc white, very big uh, mountain. From and it is very high, so it's located very high, and from there you walk up, and then you can you have a be very beautiful view from for the Turkish uh, landscape, and the special with this is that this white calc mountain water comes from there it is like a natural fountain and the water is always going down and the, now now time nowadays it is forbidden to touch it because they, it is getting bad it is getting destroyed like the machu picchu now they you are not allowed to to jump there or they have to take care of it so that it will be conserved and i remember that I, in that time when i went there it, it was not uh, forbidden so I remember that I went the whole way down from this white, beautiful mountain on top of the, of the, of the, on, on top of it, it was like a channel and the water was pouring down. So it was like a very big down way, uh, how do you call the rodadero? Slice. Okay, slice, yes, very nice and beautiful. In... Then another place that I have been, it is called um, um, Istanbul. No, no, I have not been in Istanbul because I told you that I went to this, I go to these different, these special places where the tourists are taken. And if you want, they don't, usually they don't have this kind of charters to the big cities, but it, it is most to, um, it is more to, to touristic and sunny places where the people want to get sun and, and swim at the sea. So it was not there. But in Turkey, I have been another time and it is called, it is in the south part of Turkey and it is called the Anlaya, Antlaya and the, the, something that it is called the, the Turkish Rivera. Very beautiful, amazing highways for ways to, to each side, like eight carriles, eight ways. 
uh, very nice people, very friendly too. It's the only place in the in the world that I have. I come to a little little small restaurant, and the owner who is sitting there in this little shop, he gets up and he wants me to sit in his place and eat his food. For example, they are very, they're so very they're very kind people. And the, the amazing uh, thing with this uh, Turkish Riviera is that they have it is that they have hundreds of hotels, if not plenty, like ten, um, like hundred hotels. The one, the each hotel better than the other hotel. All of them are in uh, five uh, five stars hotel, with everything included. They have the three different uh, restaurants. They have a uh, private uh, uh, playas, uh, chores where you can swim. They have a uh, beautiful uh, decoration. Uh, but, and, and the name of these places, they are the diamond, the excelsior, the magnet, the one, they, it's like a competition. They want to have the, the, the one, the other than the better one. And then in this place, where in the hotel that I have been there, they have something that is called Haman. Ah, that I that I I could uh, have the experience to uh, take a bath in the Haman. Haman is like a very big, um, it's like a little temple, small like this, like a couple. Is it, especially for it's like a sauna, like a sauna, like a bath to sauna, but more it is monumental. And instead of that, the heating is coming from something warm there that you put water on it. It is a big stone, marble stone in the middle, like a big table, but much bigger. You can lie there on this marble uh, bed or, or uh, a big table. Many people get placed there. And especially with this is that they wash you. They, they, they can, you, you get a special cloth, the woman that also recover, <laughs> the men in church, so, and uh, it come one, generally it is one woman that comes there with a lot of uh, soap and make a lot of bubbles with some kind of uh, clothes, and they begin to, to blow these uh, soap bubbles on top of you, and they wash you, you just lie there, they wash your back, your feet, you, you are like a prince, and then they come with different kinds, it is, pouring water everywhere in this beautiful cackle decorated uh, bath, rit ritual bath, and they have uh, water in different temperatures, cold, little uh, warmer, warmer, heat, warm. So they pour you different kinds of water all the time while they're washing you. Then, uh, and it is amazing, you can come there with your couple and you feel like a, like a sultan when you are inside there. And after that, they give you, they put you a robe, they make you very warm, they give you apple tea, and they want you to relax and feel very good. It is an amazing thing that I recommend to everybody when they have the opportunity to go to the Haman. So I, I experienced these Hamans both in first time in Turkey, in Marmaris, they had it there. And then I experienced also in this, in the Turkish Rivera. This is a, a, a Turkish ritual. Then another country that I like very much, that they have been there. It is in the north of Africa. It is called tu Tunis, Tunisia. I don't say, I don't remember. Tunis, Tunis. That the, is the, the, the old um, capital of uh, the, of the uh, it was called Cartago. Cartago is the capital of the old Tunis. It's the, the north part. It is where from an evil came to, to Rome and the elephants and all the Byzantine war and everything, I don't have to tell you this. But uh, it was very amazing because in there they had the biggest and the largest mosque. Mosque, mosque, this is a, a Muslim country and they have the biggest and the largest mosque at the northern, on top of, on, on north of the Sahara, of the Sahara. It is called the the uh, the mesquite, the mesquita de Kiruan, Kiruan Mosque. Beautiful. You just you see this, and it, it's like it never ending. It is difficult to come in, but from the part from the outside, you have a very beautiful view, and it is it is built by like in some kind of terracotta, like in 
how do you call it, like mud. And it's still, it's amazing, I'm very old. Then also in, um, in Tunis, in Tunisian, they have the very beautiful city that it is called the Blue City. It is called in their, in their language, it is called Sidi Bou Said. Sidi Bou Said, the name is very funny. And everything is like blue, small houses that you see are, are, uh, across the, 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 the coastline. Very beautiful, all everything is blue, the blue city, very beautiful. There I the, the first time that I had the opportunity to, to, to ride a camel too. Cam, it was very funny. And then uh, they have two different uh, beautiful uh, uh, cities that they are very touristic. They are, it is called, the one is called Hamamet, Hamamet, and the other one is called Sus. Hamamet and Sus, they are very near to each other, very touristic, and the Tunisian at the last, uh, the last century it was invaded by the, by the French. So they speak French there too. And they have very beautiful uh, wine culture. So you find good Tunisians uh, uh, and uh, French wines, Tunisian, but with French quality and the uh, procedure to make. And the, the most delicious food in the world that it is called couscous. This couscous is a, it's like a, like a green, I don't know what they call it, it's like a small, small grains, not as big as the maize, but very, very small, small, smaller. And they cook it and they make very good sauces with this, both with the lamb and fish and chicken. So it does, I, I remember that I ate there every, every, every afternoon at the side of the sea, sun shining, sunset, drinking a good French wine in Tunisia and eating a special couscous. It was my favorite. So this it's fantastic. One of the best experiences with all these travels is that the, the, the culinary experience that it is part of the culture too, it is it's just a good combination. Then I, in another country that I like very much and that I am very attached to, it is Greece. Greece. As you can see, all these countries are around the Mediterranean, the ones I'm talking about now. And it is because of this uh, charter tradition that Swedish people used to take to the, to the warmer places around the Mediterranean during the summer. And the special thing is that in uh, the normal holidays for the children in Sweden, that is obligatory, the school, in, the, the school of the, the education in Swedish, it is obligatory, it's not only free, but uh, obligatory. It uh, ends in the, the the term, how do you call it, termin, el semestre, the termin, uh, finish at, in the first week of June and the guns begins the second week in, in, in August. So between that period, the first week of June and the last of August, these tickets, these charter tickets, they go to the peak, they cost very much because, so that they, these, these companies, they want to charge more because it is many people who has holiday. The father can go, the mother can go, the children is, uh, they are free from school, so they just go there. But before that, there is some short period that the, 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 the summer, the summer uh, period begins early in, in the south of Europe than in Sweden. And many people, they, they don't know that, but I always try to, to travel just before the first week of June or after the second uh, uh, week of August, because it is much more cheaper, less than 50%. So that is very beautiful and it is still warm in the south uh, of Europe at this time. So Greece, I have been very attached to go to. First time I went to one place that it is called in Athens. You arrive to At Athenas, Athens, and then you take a bus to the harbor that it is called El Pireo, it's very famous, El Pireo. Piraeus, and then from there you take a little boat and you begin to, they have thousands, I don't know, hundreds of islands, small islands. And the very first island that it is nearest by like half an hour from, from, uh, from El Pireo, from Aten, it is called Agina, Agina. And it is very popular for the people when they finish the school in, in Aten, the, the excursions from the school, they go to Agina too. 
So it is very popular for the young people. So it is always part. It's like San Andres in Colombia, but with the Mediterranean style. So I spend little time there too, good food, the people there are nice, nice uh, countryside. They, they have uh, very beautiful flowers and the people very kind, good music and uh, whatever. And then um, in, um, in Greece, I have been also in one place that is called Rodos, the Rodas, I don't know how do you call it in Spanish, Rodas, Rodos, the island of Rodos that they have, um, a different kind of culture. It is little more like a combination with Turkish, little more Turkish. It is not so European, but it is little more like Turkish too. And the, the men, they go with one little, like a ro rosario in Spanish that you put to, to, to pray the, to make the praise at the old church, but they have it with bigger balls. So they go with this thing, it is called comboli. And uh, I, I think that this was very funny because of the men they are going with this thing. And when I ask why they have this thing, it is because they want to attract the woman, making this so that the woman begin to look at them moving these small balls. So it's like an old trick. Huh? So I have my comboli at home too. <laughs> and then um, in, a, in these rodos, beautiful, nice fish too, beautiful harbor nice weather and then from there you can go to one place that it is called Lindos. Lindos is a place that you come up to the some, some, some kind of cliffs and then by don donkey they take you you ride a donkey and you begin to go down down these cliffs down down to a very beautiful beach down there that it is called Lindos. It is famous because of the donkeys. They, we don't have so much, so many donkeys here in Sweden. So when the people go there, they are very attached to, attached to, to ride the donkey. And there I have been also in my first or second uh, nudist, nudist uh, beach. It was called Zambica. I have uh, very good memories from there too. La Playa de, de Zambica. Then nearby, um, in uh, in Greece, uh, there have uh, the biggest the biggest island in the in the Mediterranean. The biggest of them, of all of them, it is called Creta. Creta, Creta in English, I think. It, Creta, it is very well known because they have the the uh, ancients, the oldest of all the civilizations in uh, in Europe. This is where they have the, the Minotaurus. If, I don't know if you remember the, the labyrinth and the Minotaurus. Some uh, philosophical, um, uh, some uh, not philosophical, but mythology. Mythology is a um, tale about the ancient uh, mythic uh, culture from, from Creta. And uh, this Creta is very, very funny, very beautiful, large island. And the, what I begin to know when I arrived there, it is that uh, it was it was a, a, a fight uh, between the Nazis that had invited the the, the island and the, the troops from the New Zealand and Australia came, came there to to fight against the, the Nazis. So they uh, got a, a war, a battle there, and each one of them has their own old cemetery in every end of the of the island. So it is very, it is amazing because in, in so from so, so far away as from Australia, people coming to to have these memories and to visit their 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 people who died there, and they have have some, they have had some commemorations, and it is very funny because for from so so far away to come and, and make a fight. Excuse me. To, to fight. Yes. It's time to go to the next session. This so quickly. So quickly, 40 minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay, students, please, let's go. Let's move to the second session. I'll okay. see you all there. Okay, see you there. Yeah. Anyway. Move to the second session. Okay. Alba.